witnessing conducting health assessment so conducting health assessment is very important even in medically as well as nursing especially when it comes for the clinical health assessment is the basic of that it means if without assessing the patient we won't be able to conduct the further diagnosis as well as the treatments so for that we need to mainly conduct an assessment of the patients okay so in clinically for this we normally call making a report health record so when it comes to the recording our first priority has to be given to the basic features that means basic signs and symptoms or the basic things that we can see from the patient especially with the chief complaint what the normal signs and symptoms I mean, obvious signs and symptoms then we can go for the history of the patient after that we can make some differential diagnosis but to confirm the diagnosis we can go for the laboratory examination and then imaging examinations and then we can rule out the diagnosis and then the next even when it comes to the cancer especially when cancer diagnosis the main clinical assessment is very important so now let's go ahead with this the objectives will be discuss the role of nurses in health assessment process. Explain the types, methods, techniques, components of assessment. And here I'm going to introduce you the basic health assessment skills. Today we'll let's see what will relate to the cancer diagnosis. So health assessment, health assessment is an essential nursing function which provides foundation for quality nursing care and intervention it helps identify the strength of clients in promoting health health assessment helps to identify clients needs clinical problems evaluate responses of the person to health problems and intervention nurse and health assessment accurate and thorough health assessment reflect the knowledge and skills of a professional if you want to be a professional and skillful, a perfect nurse, you have to go with an accurate and thorough health assessment. So it will reflect you the professionalism. Assessment is the first step to determine health status. It is gathering of information to have all necessary puzzle pieces to make a clear picture of the person's health status. That's the thing that I told you for the final diagnosis. The health assessment will be the puzzle pieces. If we miss one of these puzzles, then the final puzzle, that means the diagnosis puzzle, won't be completed. Assessment is the deliberate and systematic collection of data to determine client's current and past health status, functional status, and to determine client's present and hoping pattern. Assessment is a part of each activity the nurse does for and with the patient. Nursing assessment focuses upon the client's response to health. Nursing assessment should include clients' perceived needs, health problems related experience, health practices, values, and lifestyle. To be most useful, the data collected should be relevant to particular health problem. Therefore, nurses should think critically about what to assess. That means Again, like this will be very helpful for the clinical diagnosis and it will be very helpful for the health problems related experience, health practices, values and especially to improve the lifestyle of a patient. So these puzzle pieces, if we make them correctly, that means we will have to think critically to make them correctly. Therefore, nurses should always have to act critically think critically 
and work hard to make the perfect puzzle at the end. So this is the thing, assessment. Then we can go for the nursing diagnosis and we can plan for the further treatments or if plan for the implementation. Then we can evaluate it. So again, this is the cycle of nursing process. So here also you can see nurse and the client. This is the relationship. This is how to communicate with them. So basically, nurse has to mainly go with intervention, evaluation, assessments, the nurse in diagnosis planning, and this is how approach it approach to the patient. Nursing diagnosis, planning, intervention, again nursing diagnosis. This is the way how we have to approach the patient. Right. So assessment identifies the patient's strengths and limitations. Think about a normal person. The person's strengths and limitations, the strengths will be higher and the limitations will be lower. But if the person is in a disabled state, Need the strengths will be lower and the limitations will be higher. So it is done continuously throughout the nursing process. So basically, if you find a ill patient, definitely you have to continue this process, right? So that means the initial assessment, then we can make the baseline data, right? Simply the differential diagnosis, okay, but which includes the history, uh, laboratory participants. Uh, imagine diagnosis and all the basic diagnostic procedures and then def uh, they identify the diagnosis. Then we can go for the development plan, implement plan and assess the patient's response. Treatments, how the patient responds to the disease, how the prognosis is. So finally, you assess the effectiveness of your plan for the care of your patient. What do you do? Where do you begin? Now, if you want to assess, then we need a point to start it. So, what are the types of patients' assessment? Mainly pediatric, which means neonates, infant, children of all categories, adolescents, then young adults and adults, geriatric, that means elderly people, especially conscious, unconscious, delirious, and all, and psychiatric, differential category. Hysterics, right? Even acute chronic patients. According to these types, you have to make some, uh, you have to follow some different method to do the assessment. So that is the basic. Then you need to know what is the purpose of doing this. Now we already know the purpose. The main target, the aim is to make the initial diagnosis. Let's see, like the normal. Purposes and normal procedures of assessment, right? To collect data uh, pertinent to the patient's health status, subjective wise or objective wise. And to identify deviations from normal, that means how the patient's or how, how a normal person's lifestyle has been changed, has already changed due to a particular illness. So that's the deviation from the normal life to the ill situation. We can identify with that. And to discover the patient's strength, limitations, and coping resources. To pinpoint actual problem. That means to mainly point out, okay, what is the problem that the patient, that this person is having. And to spot factors that place the patient at risk of health problems. That means if this patient is at a risk of a particular Or maybe this patient is leading to some complications of this disease. With a proper assessment of health, we can simply identify that and we can advise the patient what to do next. And to build, should be a report, should build rapport with patient and family. That means basically have to, like you can make some uh, ethical status between the patient and the family. Assessment. That means to communicate. So types of assessment, time lapsed assessment. Emergency assessments, we have to do focus assessments, initial assessments. So if we take emergency assessment, that means we cannot do emergency assessment as a focal assessment because we need to take the immediate action. We need to emerge, like 
first we need to diagnose the disease. So for that we have to follow a different different procedure, right? So let's see what are those initial assessment. It is done within specified time after admission to the hospital. That means after admit patient admitted to the hospital, we can approach the purpose of doing this. Establish a complete database for Reference and future comparison, example by admission assessment. And focus on ongoing assessment. So what's the purpose of this? Determine the status of specific problem identified in the earlier assessment. That means like after doing the initial assessment, we can continue the assessments. So for that we can call ongoing assessment. So ongoing assessment is to identify if there is any problem or specific uh, thing that we identified from the early assessment or to identify new or overlooked problem that means if this, this is uh, leading to some complications then we can uh, overlook a, on that then we can identify them. All right especially fluid intake output assessment like after giving these treatments and all we have to assess the patient whether okay now the patient is behind normal status okay like an emergency assessment, okay. During any uh, physiologic and uh, psychologic crisis of the patient, to identify the life threatening problems. If a problem is there and it is life threatening, then we need to identify it fast. So, especially ABC assessment in cardiac care. For that, we need to do it fast. Assessment of suicidal attempt on violence. Even for that, we cannot like do the normal initial assessment, then ongoing wise, because Suicidal attempt will happen like really fast. So for that we need to take immediate action. Then what is this time lapse assessment? Several months after the initial assessment, we can go for this time lapse assessment. That is to compare current status to baseline data previously obtained. We can like obviously compare the normal, the current situation and with the situation when the patient had the symptoms, had the problem. Now we can assess or make some uh, decisions according for the according to the future treatment. We can just simply stop the treatment if the patient is taking drugs for the same uh, same problem and few uh, maybe months years or back. So, a uh, reassessment of client's functional health pattern in home care. This is a normal time lapse system that means if the person is there at home who had medicine for, uh, I mean, who had chemo for cancer, for a stomach cancer, and now he got cured. But we need to do the time lapse assessment to make sure this patient is not recurring the problem again. Right, so that's the thing. Ongoing assessment wise, ongoing means uh, systemically monitoring the specific problem. For example, pain assessment. Pain assessment we are going to uh, discuss uh, in the next few slides, okay, with uh, uh, more details. What are the methods of assessment? Primary methods are observing the patient, simply observe the patient, right? If a patient is having problems, especially of uh, left upper quadrant, left upper uh, abdominal quadrant pain. And the patient, you can observe the patient. That means like patient's expressions, like feelings. And all you can simply observe it if any problems with the skin, all right? If any problems with the uh, functioning, the motor nervous system or whatever, you can simply observe it. With the functions itself, appearance wise, inspection we call physical examination, and interview. We can just ask some questions from the patient, right? Simply, and examining. That means we can exam examine the patient. That means simply, let's say, uh, blood pressure monitoring, right? There are so many uh, white like simply vital signs. There are so many methods of examining this. Physical examinations, laboratory examinations, imaging examinations. So those are the ways, the basic primary methods. Okay. 
the most practical lesson that can be given to a nurse to teach them what to observe. Okay. That's the main thing. Uh, if you, you are going to work as a nurse, so main thing you have to complete or you have to always consider is to observe. For it, maybe said not that the habit of uh, ready and correct observation will be itself make us useful nurses, but that without it we shall be useless with all our devotion. Okay. So what is observing? It is a conscious, deliberate skill developed only through and with an organized approach. Okay, that means it has to be very organized. And what is interviewing? It is a planned communication or a conversation with a purpose. Especially when we are taking the history, we need to interview the patient. Maybe sometimes not only the patient, maybe sometimes the patient's family members as well. We will have to observe. So, we are directive or non-directive speaking, process wise. It is not judgmental, I am observant. It is not judgmental, I just have excellence assessment skills. So, the art of physical examination. Okay, physical examination is also an art. Because that you have to follow nice guidelines with nice procedures. What is the first thing that the normal technique? Wise inspection, obvious observation, and palpation. Palpation means simply you can feel the patient. Okay, again, let's go to the abdomen. Abdomen. The patient is having the pain in the abdomen. And you can simply feel it, simply touch it, simply press it to see or to feel whether there's any abnormality. It can be lump, right? It can be tenderness. So you can simply palpate it but i mean this is for the palpation i'm telling inspection wise what you can uh, uh, inspect you can observe the patients okay in an abdominal cavity whether there's any bulging any enlargement that you can obvious you can observe it so palpation is a feeling so percussion you can tap simply tap according to this photo you can simply tap the patient like just check whether like especially the chest cavity is having resonance or not. If the chest cavity is dull, if the percussion sound will be dull, then it can be a problem. If the uh, abdomen uh, percussion will be resonant, then again that will be a problem, just like that. So, uh, auscultation is always we will have to use the stethoscope to auscultate the patient. And from there, you can hear sounds, especially with the heart sound sounds abdominal sounds you can hear so for that you have to use your hearing skills so okay inspection close and careful visualization of the person and of each body system especially like example is rashes if there is any color change edema that means you can simply observe the patient's skin if the skin is not the normal color, so that means yellow, whether it's so to dark bluish color, pink color, okay, that means whether there's any edema in the leg, abdomen, anything. What is the normal structure and what is deviated from the normal structure of the shape of the body features and all, so you can observe it, you can inspect it. And the palpation wise, you can palpate the temperature, texture, organ size, and location whether the location is in the correct position or whether it's enlarged or not by palpation. And rigidity and spasticity. Spasticity means how tendon the tendon wise, whether it's tendon. Uh, I, 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 what you can feel from palpation, whether it's rigid or not. And Crepitation, vibration, position and size, tenderness, pain, presence of lumps or masses. So those are the things. Percussion assess the underlying structures of location, especially the size, density of underlying steel. So that we can do the percussion. Auscultation, listening to sounds produced by the body. 
for that we can use the scope doppler effect and factor scope nursing tips use the bell of the stethoscope to hear low pitch sounds dive from to hear high pitch sound so uh, if you need to hear the abdominal breeze or carotid breeze then you have to use the bell but if you want to hear the normal uh, normal heart sounds or the normal abdominal bubble sounds or chest sounds then you can use the diaphragm of the stethoscope so assessment process collecting data organizing data validating data and documenting data. that means we have to collect organize that means accordingly validate it and then document it, make the report collecting data sources of data primary or secondary it can be primary source will be the patient right so alertness that means the consciousness oriented patient is most reliable source the patient is alerted or conscious the patient is the most reliable source of getting the primary source collecting data age mentally deterioration serious ill then like it's quite difficult to get the information from the patient itself right so then we will have to go for maybe the family members or we'll have to depend with the uh, examiner secondary resources family members significant others like medical records diagnosis impressive why the family members are important to get to know if the patient is not accessible then we can go we can ask from the family members okay whether this patient had this or any family members had this problem he can survive uh, if any infectious disease occupational wise so many things that we can ask like this. the patient is not accessible collecting data processing of gathering information now we got some information from the patient that means we actually with the history with the symptoms so those are the things that we can gather from the patient so uh this collecting data wise nurses they collect subjective wise that means the symptom verbal statement by the patient about okay example nose okay i had nose yeah and pain in this a particular area i felt fatigue you know? it's itching on my skin so those are the thing like symptoms that patient can tell to the nurse and what is objective signs over data that means detected by an observer can be measured over an accepted standard can be seen felt heard smell information by observation or examination or oh, simply clinical manifestations we can divide into two parts those are symptoms and signs signs and symptoms symptoms is always what the patient can explain signs what the practitioner or the observer can observe it's a easiest way to remember okay. um and about this uh, pqr st methods of pain assessment anyway the pain assessment i'm going to discuss it in the next half of this discussion so uh, till then we i will just simply explain what is this onset so when it comes to the cancer assessment or the pain assessment wise we have to always go for the onset that means what you were doing when the pain started like okay when did your pain started and uh, at what time like what were you doing at that time you uh you were working somewhere or you were having something like lunch dinner maybe anything or you what were you doing that's the thing and p provokes what causes pain what makes it better what makes it worse check like, uh, we can ask eating uh, how is your symptoms how do you feel and uh, before that how did you feel like that you can ask and the quality what does it feel like is it like you can simply palpate and ask how oh, okay i'm going to do, uh, touch you and tell me what kind of pain that you can feel whether it's a sharp pain dull pain stabbing pain burning crushing anything you can tell the patient to describe the pain okay uh, the patient will tell i'm having a pain uh, in my 
uh, upper abdomen upper stomach uh, so then we can ask okay what type of a pain is that is it a burning pain yeah then yeah it is a burning pain then the quality of the disease radiates where does the pain radiate uh, what are the places else than the upper abdomen that you can feel the pain oh my pain is radiating to the neck as well so now we will have to think about another diagnosis as well right that means we can list out the diagnosis with these types of information so radiates and severity how severe is the pain okay uh, tell me from 1 to 10 how severe is your pain the patient will say okay since it's a burning pain i will uh, give a score like 7 maybe okay that's a rate that's severity and time what time the pain started how long did it last uh, this pain started two days ago and uh, normally it lasts two three hours after eating something okay if eating too much of food uh -oh. Like that, we can simply ask questions and then we can make the diagnosis. I mean, approach to the diagnosis, okay? While collecting data, when you communicate to collect data, aware of verbal or nonverbal messages to the patient. Genuineness is very important. It's a must. Be open, honest, and sincere with the patient. You need to always genuine, be genuine and respect. Don't neglect the patient, right? Be non judgmental. It's like you have to go to the patient and you have to ask the questions. It is not a rule or like a thing that he has to done, like, right? That we need to get the information for his beneficials. So we need to be very respectful and genuine. And one more thing, it's very important, empathy. Is knowing what patient means, acknowledge and understanding how he or she feels. Like if we go to the patient, if we approach to the patient with an angry face or angry mood. Okay, tell me your data. I don't care. Uh, uh, when did you pain this time? Oh, come on, this tell me. Okay, how is this feels? If you were not empathizing the patient, then definitely he will be he will feel worried and then he won't tell the exact thing that we need to know. So always, please be genuine, please be respectful and empathy. So those simple things are very important. Organizing data. Cluster the data into groups of information. Like now we are collected data. Then we need to organize them into some clusters that like, okay, we took uh, history of the patient. Now we can categorize them in personal uh, history of the present illness, past history, family history, personal history, marital history, occupational history, whatsoever. We can simply categorize it. We can also organize it. What are the results of uh, physical examinations? What are the results of the laboratory examinations? Imaging examination like that. We can categorize them. Validating data. Double checking or verifying the data whether it is factual or accurate. That is also quite important because we cannot just simply take the uh, information. We need to double check it. Assessment of information must be accurate, factual and complete. Nursing diagnosis and interventions based on these procedures and status. And then at last, we have to make a document. So, documenting data. Accurate documentation is essential, which include all data collected about the client's health status. Then, whenever you want, you can simply observe, simply uh, check this out, the documents. And you have a proof afterwards as well. Okay? So, that is the main reason we are doing this document process. Record in a factual manner, not interpretation. For example, recording the breakfast intake as I uh, ate two pieces of one neck and one cup of coffee instead of good appetite. That means we cannot write it down like this. 
okay then had uh, taken two pieces of bread toast one egg and one cup of coffee obviously the idea is he is having a good appetite so that must that can be the thing that the patient has already told you but you cannot write it in the documenting documentation you have to write patient is having good appetite and the urination uh, normal something like that that's a basic right uh, the patient uh, had to go to washroom for two three times no it has to be diarrhea two three times a day vomiting oh, i i vomited uh, five times a day vomited time five at uh, the, the chief complaint can be and doctor my stomach is paining and uh, on as my stomach is paining and this pain is for a long time and uh, that is very that is very, it is like very, it is very discomfortable for me so you cannot write this as the chief complaint you can you can write maybe burning pain sensation or upper abdominal pain for two days that's the simplest way to write the chief complaint so that is the thing but i need to explain you when it comes to the recording uh it has to be a factual manner okay so reporting when you will report depending on each patient this is condition potential problems family interests psychological upset skills require for health assessment what are the skills that you need cognitive skills assessment is thinking process so critical thinking is a must and clinical decision making use knowledge and experience and problem solving skills with scientific methods experience in tuition with experience means simply you i know you know about the scientific method so like that with the evidence this is like evidence based thing so with the evidence with the things that you communicate with the patient we have we can make some uh, we can make a list of our diagnosis we can simply write down whatever we think and then with the further treatment further uh, examination we can this uh, rule out some diagnosis and psychomotor uh, and uh, psychomotor skills assessment is doing effective interpersonal skills assessment is feeling trust and mutual respect ethical skills assessment is being responsible and accountable for your practice okay this is the thing now medical assessment versus nursing assessment what are the difference between these two assessment is the part of medical practice the process is same but the outcome is different especially medical assessment we need to diagnose and go for the further treatments but the nursing assessment we just have to focus on patient as a person and reach to the optimal level of wellness okay this sentence is saying we need to focus on the patient as a person and reach to the optimal level of wellness that means even sometimes after treatment also nurses have to do the assessments okay holistic approach both should complement not contradict like nursing assessment contribute to identification of medical problems okay so that is the main thing like assessment we have to always go for the diagnosis and go out and then the treatments for that the specific treatment assessment is thinking assessment is feeling assessment is doing assessment is being accountable and responsible for your practice so this is the thing uh, you may be thinking like okay this is not about cancer or but to assess the cancer this is the same procedure is the same when right? you have to follow the same procedure same manner and cancer there are some specific diagnostic methods as well so that, now let's focus on those but to for the assessment and for the approach and for the final diagnosis you need to know the basic assessment methods it's same for everything okay pain assessment on oncology anyway at the end i'm going to discuss a case with you so from that hope you will get what is this assessment okay so 
So burden of cancer, like 6.7 million deaths. New cases have been found for like 10, like around 11 millions, 25 millions people living with cancer. So this is a very huge number, no? So uh, this is the incidence rate, like 10.3 million people per year unless we act. That means, that's the thing. We need to assess this. We need to assess the patient. And then we can simply identify it. And then we can go for the further treatments. If we are not going to do it properly, then these values will be will become higher day by day. Cancer pain. 30 to 50% of cancer patients are on active therapy. And 100, 100 people are cancer patients. 30 to 50% are going on active therapies. And 5 million or more cancer patients are suffering from pain with or without adequate therapy. That's the thing. So pain can be physiological as well as psychological. So when it comes for the management of pain or assessment of pain, we will have to think about all of these. 27% patient perceive cancer death painful. See, 57%. And 69% consider committing suicide due to pain. So if, at least if we reduce this pain, we can reduce this number. At least if we give a try. And we can add this number to this area. They are on active therapy. So at least out of this 50, another 80% will, I mean out of this 50, another 80% will become cured. If we are going to do this properly. And cancer related pain at diagnosis, mainly 25% during the therapy, 30%. Advanced disease, if the disease is going to becoming advanced, then 75% will be. So barriers to pain management. For each and everything, we have a barrier. So what are the barriers for the pain management? Inadequate assessment. Why is this important? If we are not assessing the patient's problems properly, we will treat for another problem. And the original problem and the pain will be remaining the same because the assessment was wrong. The patient reluctance to report pain. Patient reluctance to take opioids. Because some people, they're like that kind of reluctant to report the pain. And sometimes they don't know how to explain it properly. And some are reluctant to take uh, painkillers. Physicians are uh, reluctant to prescribe opioids. And some physicians, they are not giving much opioids. Opioid means a type of a painkiller. So they are like not willing to write this opioid sometimes. And inadequate staff knowledge about pain management. If, obviously, if the staff doesn't know, about this, then definitely the patient will be remain will be in the pain. Nursing staff reluctant to give opioids. Excessive stage regulations of analgesics. Cancer pain classification. Uh, no septive. That means uh, skin, viscera, muscles, connective tissue, and somatic pain. Wise, it is co uh, most common type. It is the most common type. Bone metastasis most common cause for the somatic pain. Visceral pain, commonly referred to cutaneous sites, neuropathic pain, injury to peripheral lobe, central nerve system. So pain we can divide to somatic and visceral pain. So this is the WHO three step approach, pain. Then we can, the next step will be non-opioid adjuvants. If the pain is going to persist or if the pain is increasing, then we can go for the opioids. Or oh, we can op moderate the non-opioid agents. If the patient is uh, persisting, then we can go for the opioids or moderate severe pain non-opioid agents. And then freedom from cancer pain. Right. The approaching steps. New concepts of management, assessment of pain, individual uh, assessment of pain, individualization of therapeutic approach, continual reassessment. That means with the continual reassessment, we can maybe change the methods of the treatments. 
we can change the approach methods right simplest approach continuing communication define goals assurance of availability of universal screening screen for pain quantity pain pain more than zero comprehensive pain assessment pain equals to zero repeat screening at each subsequent visit the pain is not there then that means we don't have to worry much but still you have to repeat the screening right? measure the quantity of pain clinical assessment of pain relieve the patient's complaint so if you need to assess and to treat the pain you need to believe the patient's complaint but sometimes even in clinical wards you can experience it the patients are complaining without any problem as well sometimes or revealing the actual pain then if you give them the opioids and then again it will lead to another complication so the thing you always have to believe the patient's complaint and careful history assessment characteristics of each pain list and prioritize each pain complaint evaluate response to uh, previous therapy psychological state evaluation alcohol or drug dependency comprehensive pain assessment wise intensity so uh, pain assessment comprehensive the intensity wise that is when this is going to happen uh, did the pain start when you were Did the pain when you were sleeping? Did the pain start when you were sleeping? Did the pain start uh, when you were walking? That means with any movements. Or uh, did the pain start while you were maybe doing any activity? Yeah. So the other thing, the intensity of the and pain intensity numerical scale. Verbally, we can ask the patient, okay, how much the pain that you are having can you give me a number between 0 to 10 okay the patient will describe um, i'll give 8 then written one you can give this chart and you can tell the patient to circle it how much pain that you are having simply the 0 1 2 will no zero will be no pain and 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 will be pain will be the worst imaginable pain and Okay, this look at this one. Pain intensity, Wong Baker faces. So here, patient smiling, and that will indic will indicate zero, no pain maybe. And hurts a little bit will. You can obviously visible with the. Then, if you can remember one more thing that we discussed, the observation. This is the way that you can do the. So four hurts a little more, five six will be hurts even more, seven eight hurts a whole lot, hurts is the worst. So that is the pain category, intensity category, uh, categorical like scale. Okay. Okay. With this you can obviously no pain, mild pain, moderate. Look at the face now. Severe pain, oh, very severe, worst possible. assessment take a pain history to elucidate cause of pain you know who is this socrates so take a pain history of uh, elucidate cause of pain for that you can do the socrates the socrates site which site is that and onset whether it is sudden onset or it is there for a long time that is to identify If it is sudden onset, then acute. If it is for a long time of period, then it can be chronic. And character, radiation, right? Associated symptoms, timing, exacerbating, relieving factors. So this is the PQRST thing, right? In a different way to remember. But anyway, you need to remember the stuff of Socrates. That is what we are doing now. okay comprehensive pain assessment first thing we need to do we need to identify the location then about the pathophysiological characteristics of the pain whether it's somatic it means pain skin muscle bone described i say stabbing thrombing pressure whether it's visceral pain 
any organ or visceral disturb disturb as uh, naving uh, cramping aching sharp or anything neuropathy it's neuropathy or not so after assessing the location we can go for the characteristics then history of pain other points like onset duration course referred is a thing okay talk about this thing and comprehensive pain assessment the third one like so the first one is the location second one is the pathophysiology and the third one is the etiology etiology means the cause pain syndromes the causes associated with tumor infiltration associated with cancer therapy unrelated to cancer therapy whether it's associated with the cancer therapy or whether it is not associated or unrelated to the cancer therapy and medical history this is important medical history so it can be related to the current uh, problem that the patient is having that means whether the patient had this problem before or he whether he has been taken any medicine he has been given any medicine right for the same disease and what are the examination that already been done those are the things that in the current medication and we can ask for the past histories past medical history any other infections disease habit meditators uh, hypertension or whatsoever you can ask then personal advice you can ask are you taking alcohol are you taking are you, are you smoke do you do you smoke so do you smoke or uh, what are the normal status that of your normal life the occupation history family history marital history you can simply ask and complementary and alternative therapies that normally are going undergoing oncologic other significant medical illness so those are the things that we can include in the medical history side or social aspect of pain patient distress family and other available support psychiatric history including current or prior history of substance abuse special issues relating to pain meaning of pain for patient family in family knowledge and benefit surrounding pain cultural beliefs towards the pain spiritual or religious considerations so those are the things like we have to deal very carefully like special issues relating to the pain so if this is related as i we know even in sri lanka even in so many countries we go for the cultural i mean we go for the beliefs right and especially uh, with some uh, unauthorized medications i don't know quite uh, i'm not talking about diuretic or anything this is like some beliefs they are going on they are following their beliefs and something like that, that is not always a, acceptable right so with that we need to deal very carefully especially with when it come for the come for the uh, psycho social aspect okay clinical examination appropriate diagnostic procedures treat plan as necessary for workup individualized diagnostic and therapeutic approach continuity of care reassess patient for response as advanced directive with patients patient and the family clinical assessment of this is a clinical exam and one more thing like okay this is the thing screening of the pain quantity of pain intensity the characteristics the quality right and with that you can mainly categorize it whether it's more than 0 that means from 0 to 10 if it is so then we have to comprehensive the pain intensity moments location wise pathophysiological characteristics pain history etiology medical history psycho social issues and all but if it is zero then rescreen at each subsequent visit if it is zero that means if any chance of uh, making i mean in chance of leading it to more than zero then obviously it is better to rescreen and observe the patient and if the patient is more than zero and but if the pain not related to an oncologic emergency patient no need to take opioids right but if the patient is taking opioids the pain rating will be different like and the patient related 
to an emergency on uh, I mean emergency oncologic status. That means bone fracture or implanting fracture, weight bearing bone, brain metastasis happened, epidural metastasis, lacrimal metastasis, pain related to infection, perforated viscous, analgesics as specified by above pathway, specific treatment for oncologic emergency as clinically indicated. Like surgery, steroids, and antibiotics. So this is the thing, like simply the assessment wise, and how the assessment will lead for a better pain management. Right. So this is the basic of the. I mean, this is the summary of the topic we are discussing. And pain not related to an uh, oncologic emergency. Patient not taking opioids. Patient taking. Opioids. This is the same thing. Like here, what I am explaining. And opioid nave patient severity. 7 to 10 rapidly titrate short acting opioid. Begin bubble regimen. Bubble regimen recognize and treat side defects. Co analgesics as indicated. So if the pain is 7 to 10, but if it is one, uh, 4 to 6, titrate short acting opioids. We don't have to give much. So benign, uh, be begin, begin bubble regimen, recognize and treat side defects. So that is very obvious, no side effects, especially with opioids. So co analgesics as indicated, provide psychological support, begin educational activities, repeat assessment in twenty four to uh, forty eight hours. We don't have to do we don't have to do it below twenty four hours because its pain is in the middle stage. If one to three, consider and say so acetaminophen without opioids. Please remember this, if the pain is not severe, please don't go for pain. You always have to go for the NSAIDs, non steroid and the inflammatory drugs, painkillers, acetaminophen, that means paracetamols. So consider hydrating short acting opioids, begin bubble regimen, recognize and treat side effects, co analysis, everything are same, but repeat assessment, we don't have to do it in one or two days, we can go for 72 hours. This is the thing with the opioid. Uh, with the opioid nave, this is the thing what we can do. If the pain uh, persists for the scale will be remaining as seven to ten. This is the way of giving opioid and all. But if the pain is a one to three, one to three, reassess pain with every week until comfortable. Then every visit, you can observe the patient. Pain with oncological emergency. That means like here what I explained is the thing. Bone fracture or implementing fractures or weight bearing bone, pain metastasis, epidural metastasis, septomeningeal metastasis, pain related to infection. So the, in these kind of uh, situations, we name them as oncological emergencies. So the assessment process will be different from the others, right? Because we need to approach very fast as well as the Normal treatment methods are also different. Interventional strategy, that means the energy for the approaching. Pain likely to be relieved with nerve block, pancreas, upper abdomen, celiac plexus blockage, low abdomen, superior. That means like the pain can be relieved in sometimes without any treatment that means it can it may be due to the nerve blockage eventually it will relieve but sometimes so that as well we need to give the treatments failure of response without side effects intraspinal agents blocks spinal cord stimulation destructive uh, neurosurgical procedures neurolysis thoracosplanchiectomy uh, midline myelotomy, podotomy. So those are the things of failure response with side effects without. And again, another thing what we can do, we can uh, follow up some procedures with the surgical methods to relieve the pain. Not only with the NSAIDs or opioids, we can go for the surgical procedures as well. Right. Specific pain problem. What are the specific pain problems? Inflammation, right? Bone pain, neuropathic pain, and cancer chemotherapy. 
or radiotherapy. So due to these reasons, like especially in, due to inflammation, due to the bone pain, due to neuropathic pain, and sometimes the pain can be due to the chemotherapy as well as the radiotherapy also. Additional therapeutic modalities. What are the therapeutic modalities that we can additionally include? Physiotherapy, hypnosis, acupuncture, alternative therapy. So these are these are also like kind of modalities that we can add for the therapeutic purpose. Now this is the thing. Now only thing is what I need to say with the short time duration of the discussion. We, um, I won't be able to discuss all the points according to your guide. So please read your guideline with the uh, PPT that I have prepared. So here I have covered the basic part and the most important thing what you have to mainly focus on. Now let's see a case study. Those are the things that you will be getting in the normal clinical life, I mean normal life as a nurse. This case study concerns the patient. So the patient name is Mrs. Singh who is diagnosed with stomach cancer and is being managed with chemotherapy. Mrs. Singh, uh, 78 years old, female, present to the oncology center within with the chief complaint here. With the chief complaint. Sorry, um, I will use this one. And with the chief complaint of feeling weak and hugging the wall while walking, that means unable to walk properly. This thing is a known diabetic and was accompanied by her daughter to the clinic. That means this patient is having a history of diabetes and having, I mean, he's going undergoing the treatments for cancer and being managed with chemotherapy. That means he, sorry, uh, she has already been diagnosed as a cancer patient before. I mean, previously, not now. So, a thorough focused health history accompanied by a focused physical examination. Focused physical examination was done to a certain possible nursing diagnosis related to Mrs. Singh presenting complaints. Now, she is complaining not related to the, uh, I mean, the problem, I mean, the stomach cancer what she had before. Because it is already managed with chemotherapy, right? So now let's see what is the current diagnosis. Why she is complaining and feeling weak and hugging the wall while walking. Let's see. So health history wise, this information obtained will allow for the focused health history of the present Patient vital signs will be assessed with for the um, uh, physiological examinations. We need to assess the vital signs. What are the vital signs? Temperature, pulse, blood pressure, respiration, oxygen saturation, and all. Blood pressure in line. Sitting and standing will be assessed. If needed, any nasal flaring, use of accessory muscle or respiration difficulty breathing, oxygen via nasal cannula will be administered. If needed, if needed, we can administer this as well. After checking the oxygen saturation and the respiration process, if it is not normal and uh, if the patient is requiring these uh, oxygen cannulations and all, we can give them after assessing the patient. Okay. So, Mrs. Singh, the chief complaint is history of weakness and uh, being unable to walk without hugging the wall. And... Uh, this weakness may be due to the disease process of stomach cancer. Okay. Now we are making, we are listing out some uh, ideas. Okay, diabetes. I'm not going to use the word called uh, differential diagnosis. I will say ideas. So diabetes mellitus, as well as from the chemotherapy that she is presently having. That means she is having the she is uh, un, uh, under the chemotherapy treatments. And Mrs. Singh's age is an indication that 78 years old, right? That she is in postmenopausal, which can also contribute to her being weak as well as the possibility of hormonal treatment she may be receiving. So maybe these problems due to stomach 
I mean, process of stomach cancer or due to this hormonal treatments. It can be. So we are making the least one. Will be the second one. And inability to stand for long period of time due to weakness is also presenting symptom, uh, symptomatology of menopause. So this is the third reason can be. And the character of weakness, then we have to assess the character of the weakness. So what is it? Oh, Socrates, uh, hip, uh, Socrates method, right? And oh, the PQRST method. Onset. When did the weakness begin? Is it better or worse since the beginning? What is the location where exactly the weakness is? Does it spread to another part of the body? That means if it, if it's radiation, radiated or not. Duration. How long does the weakness last? That means the time is T. Severity. How bad is on a scale of uh, 1 to 10? Right. Pattern. What makes it better? What makes it worse? So now what we are doing now? We are assessing the patient. Cancer patient. Assessment. Associated factor wise, what other symptoms accompany the weakness? Is it possible to work or engage in other activities? Or oh, a biological data is a part of health history and it would be obtained prior to the entering the center. However, the key features that the nurse takes into account will be discussed. Then the weakness can be caused by a variety of medical conditions such as dehydration, stroke, myasthenia gravis, or any other problem or infection can be. An assessment will be directed towards neurological combining musculoskeletal and peripheral cardiovascular GI system. So that means we need to review these systems, whether it is functionally normal or any abnormalities are there. We can assess it. Neurological assessment wise, we can check the level of consciousness. So this will allow the nurse to certain whether the weakness due to neurological problems. Because as Mrs. Singh is known diabetic, and she is using chemotherapeutic drugs as well. So it can be because known diabetic patient and diabetes can be leading for the diabetic neuropathy as well. So those are the things that we need to assess and confirm it. Since Mrs. Singh's balance is affected, so that means uh, we need to go through assessment of balance using the Romberg test would be done. Would be perfect to do. So physical examination other things general examinations so those are the things that we can do to assess the patient's problem gait and balance we can do the normal i mean together with strength on muscles and nutritional assessment wise patient will be assessed for uh, anorexia dyspepsia and weight loss or any abnormal pain discomfort or anything like that we can assess the whole system then cardiovascular assessment we can check for the problems with the heart especially with the blood pressure whether you can hear any heaves any uh, inspection that you can ob observe then what any thrills from the palpation and percussion what about the cardiac borders whether they are normal or not and from the auscultation especially with the heart rate rhythm heart sounds any extra heart sounds are there or not so cardiovascular assessment we can go for that the nutritional state will be assessed as well so which will be involved that is her daily intake food and fluid that means to check the appetite and especially with the nutritional status is very important for the immunity as well, right? So even for a vitamin deficiency can lead to peripheral neuropathy. So even this can maybe a reason. So that means we can list this as well. Even diabetes, this can be the sixth one and fifth diabetic neuropathy and all. So this is the list of our diagnosis. And patient's blood value as per bio, uh, laboratory chart will be assessed. Now, since we have... Uh, Few, diag few uh, ideas about the disease. Now we can go for the tests. The test will include auxiliary examination, will include laboratory diagnosis as well as imaging diagnosis. So, the laboratory diagnosis we can check for the WBC count and the other problems or any other uh, routine examinations. Inspection of the abdomen. This has to be in the physical examination, review of system wise whether there's any problem, especially with the inspection. Observe for the, from the inspection, you can observe. It has to be changed. Uh, observe for colors. Any other uh, flank abnormal, any jaundice, discoloration, any 
swollen status of the abdomen, any pain, less swelling, hernias, or anything. Then we can do the auscultation. Here for the abdomen, auscultation comes before the percussion and palpation. Okay. So auscultation of the bowel sound and friction rubs like anything, any other problem, whether it's normal or not. Percussion wise, about the tone, dullness over the liver, spleen may be indicated, hyper hepatosmically that means any uh, liver cancer or due to liver cirrhosis i mean cirrhosis definitely the lung will be enlarged so by percussing as well as by palpation we can observe and we can feel the size is not normal now of the liver like that possible nursing diagnosis nursing diagnosis weakness related to diabetic polyneuropathy and side effects to chemotherapy anemia Imbalance related to maybe chemotherapy side effects, nutritional imbalance, impaired physical mobility related to impaired balance and evidence. So, uh, power, so powerlessness related to chemotherapy. So, these are the list or the differential diagnosis that we make. These are the simple diagnoses. You don't have to make the final diagnosis as nurses. Okay. So, that is, that is a difference between nursing assessment and the uh, medical assessment. Right. For conclusion, a thorough health assessment of Mrs. Singh done, which included a focused health history as well as focused physical assessment in order to formulate nursing diagnosis for approach, appropriate nursing interventions and referrals to be made as intermediate as possible. This allowed for the chief complaint to be logically analyzed for a plan of care to be developed for Mrs. Singh. Framework was provided as well as scientific literature to validate all assumptions made. So this is the thing. That is the reason why we are doing this assessment. Right? Okay. Hope uh, you put something to your mind, especially with the assessment. Don't take it too deep. Because it is quite simple for you to understand. And uh, whenever when you're doing the assessment, communication is very important. The ways of communicating, right? And those are the things that you normally have to do. I mean, simple stuff that you have to do as a nurse when you have to do the nursing assessment, nursing diagnosis. So uh, this is the end of the chapter today. For the extra readings and the knowledge, you can prefer some videos in YouTube as well to assess the patient especially the communication skills you will you can improve with the videos and with like with the things that you can hear and for the reading materials just use your textbook and light book for you and yes thank you so much